What's up, Codeforge here. Today we will be implementing one-to-many unidirectional relationship using JPA and Hibernate. We are starting with the project generation in the Spring Boot initializer. We have to add few dependencies here, so we will need H2 in memory database. We will need Spring Web and also we will need the JPA. So the project is ready, now we can generate it, download it and open it in the favorite ID. So here we are, I have already opened the project, today we'll start with adjusting our application properties file. So we have to open the project, we have to go to the source, main resources and here is the application properties. And over here I will paste example configuration of the JPA and H2 in memory database which we have used in the previous videos. If you don't know what is going on over here you can check out my dedicated video about setting up the H2 in memory database where I am explaining those properties. Now we can move on and create our entities so we want to go to the Java director over here and we want to open our main package. Inside we want to create a new package, so we right click it, select new and we select the package. We will call it model because we will store entities inside. We'll have two entities, so we have to create two classes. And the first one will be university, so we say university. And the second one will be student. So we select the model directory, new java class and it will be student so far so good we are in the student class so let's start with this one first of all we want to mark this class with the annotation and it will be the entity annotation also we want to specify the table name so we will use the table annotation we have to import it of course and using name attribute we can set the name so it will be student our student table will have the column with the primary key and to mark the column as the primary key we have to use the ID annotation and we will also use the generated value annotation together with the strategy attribute set to the generation type auto. By using generation type auto we are saying that the hibernate should pick the best strategy for the particular database which we are using under hood. And of course at the end we have to specify the property which will use those annotations and it will be private long ID in our case. Each student will also have index numbers so let's add another property we'll say private string index number and you can add more stuff over here but we will stick only with those two. It would be also nice to have some constructors over here and we will need the default constructor because later in the video we will be deleting entities from the database. So let's create the default constructor and it will be this one. We will create another constructor for our use and it will have one parameter which will be the index number. So we will overload it. So let's go over here and let's select index number as the parameter. Of course, we don't need to put ID in this constructor because it will be auto generated value. We can also generate the getter for the index number. And I think our entity is ready to go, so we can jump to the university. We'll start with adding entity annotation at the top. So we say entity and also we want to specify the table name so we say table and the name will be university we of course have to import it we also want to have the primary key over here so we want to add the id annotation together with the generated value and strategy set to generation type auto and we'll put it on the private long ID property. Each university in our database will have the name, so we'll say private string name. 
And the next step is to create a relationship between the university and the student. And it will be the unidirectional relationship because the information about the mapping will be only accessible from the university entity. Also, in our scenario, we will have many students assigned to one university. So it will be one to many relationship. Let's start with creating a property which will store the list of the students. So we want to say private list. And this is generic type, so we have to say student because we are doing it for the student entity. And it will have name students. We also want to assign the memory for this list, so we will say new array list. And it looks good. Now we have to mark our list of students as one to many relationship using one to many annotation, like this. We also want to use the join column annotation over here. And thanks to that, we can specify the name of the column in the student table, which will store the primary key of the university. So we'll call it university ID. Our mapping is almost ready. We can add few things to the one to many annotation over here. So First of all, we want to specify the cascade attribute and we want to set it to the cascade type all. And thanks to that, each operation performed on the university entity will be propagated to the associated entity. And in our case, it is the student entity. We will see it later when we will be persisting our entities. We'll also add the orphan removal attribute and we'll set it to true. Thanks to that attribute, if we will have university in the database and we will have three students assigned to this uh, university, if we will remove the university, students will be also removed. Our mapping is good. Now let's move on and let's create some constructors. So of course we will need the default constructor for the hibernate. And also we'll create the constructor for the name and let's say students list. I think it will be good. Let's also add the getter for the name and for the list. So we'll say getter name and list. And it looks good. Now we can start our application and check out if the DB structure will be correct. So we go to the Maven. We open our project, we go to the plugins, Spring Boot, Spring Boot Run. And after a few seconds, our application should be up and running on the port 8080. Okay, it looks good. We don't have any errors in the console. So let's open the web browser. And over here, we can connect. And let's check out if the structure is correct. So if we open up the university, we should have ID and the name. It's correct. And if we open the student table, we can see that we have ID, index number, but we will also have the university ID, which will store the primary key from the university. And thanks to that, we will know which student is assigned to which university. Okay, so we can close it up and create repositories for our entities. We need repositories to persist objects into the database. So we will create the repository package in our main package. So it will be called repository. And we will have two repositories because we have two entities. So we right click it, select new Java and it will be the interface and let's create one for the university so it will be university repository and also we'll create another one for the students so we we'll select new we change it to the interface and it will be student repository we'll start with this one so in the first place we'll mark it with the repository annotation and also we want to extend the crude repository so we'll say extends and we'll say crude repository it is generic type so in the first place we have to specify the type of the entity and in our case we want to do it for the student 
and our student entity has the primary key type of long so we have to provide long over here we'll do exactly the same for the university so we go to the university repository and over here we want to mark it with the repository and it will also extend the crude repository and this time it will be for university entity and it will be also long for the primary key everything is ready i believe so now we can go to the main class of our application and persist some data first of all we have to access the context and retrieve our repository bins we did it many times so let's do it quickly we are creating a new variable to store the context and now we can retrieve our bins so we'll have university repository with the same name and using configurable application context we can get bin uh, let's do it this way and it will be for the university repository dot class and we'll do the same for the student repository and we'll also access the context get bin but this time for the student repository dot class okay and also let's move it to another line let's create student objects so we'll say student and the first one will be called first student and we will use our constructor so we say new student and it accepts string index number as the argument so we'll say 1111 and we'll copy it and paste it and we'll change the name of the variable to the second student and in the constructor we'll change it to the 1112 now we can add our students to the list so let's create one it will be list which will be the type of student and we'll call it students we also have to import the list that's good and now we'll use the static method from the arrays and it will be as list and we will add first student and second student now we can create our university objects so we'll say university with the same name and we can use the constructor which we have created by saying new university in the first place we have to specify the name of the university yes so it will be uoc and the second argument is the list of the students so we will say students which we have created over here now we can use our university repository to persist the university object so we will say university repository dot save and we can pass our object and it will be university you can see that we are not persisting our students explicitly and this is because we have added this cascade cascade type all attribute on our one to many annotation and thanks to that those students will be persisted together with the university over here okay so let's test it out we go to the maven spring would run and after a few seconds it should be up it looks like it works so let's go to the h2 console we can connect and let's select the university first we can see that we have the university with the id1 and the name uoc and now if we go to the student table if we select it we can see that we have two students and one with the id2 second one with the id3 and they are both assigned to the university with the id1 which is the university uoc which we have created okay everything works that is great so now we can close it and stop the application 
Now we'll remove university from the database and we'll check out if the orphan removal set to true will work. So we expect that each student related to this university will be also removed from the database. Let's add another student that will be not assigned to our university. So we'll copy this line from here. We'll call him third student and we'll change it to free. This one must be saved explicitly. So we'll say student repository save third student. And now we also want to delete our university. So we will go over here, we will use the university repository. We want to delete the university and we will pass the university over here as the argument. It should be good, so we can start the application again. We say Spring Boot Run and we have to wait a few seconds. And over here, let's first take a look on the university table. It should be empty because we have added a new university together with the students. And then we have deleted. And now let's take a look on the students table. And over here we can see that we have only one student. And this is the third student which we have created. And it has an university set to null. And we do not see the first and the second student. This is because they were assigned to the university which we have deleted. So the orphan removal worked. Okay, so this is all for today. Thank you for watching. Remember about liking the video and subscribing to the channel. And of course, see you in the next video.